Hi everyone, this is the making of the moth's body. So for this one I chose quite a pale, I'm not sure if I said that in the in the head video, but I wanted quite a pale skin tone, like someone had not been outside for a while. <laughs> but also just because the pale clays give you a nice kind of sh although I suppose the, I suppose the darker clays also give you quite a nice shimmery look it just depends so I think it was just really because I wanted I just imagined her having quite a pale skin for this one then as you can see in the video her pose changed quite a lot over time I started with her legs together but somehow I just didn't it wasn't, it didn't give enough movement, I didn't feel. So I ended up moving her one leg out, which I think looked better in the end. I suppose the most of my work in this one was really the pose, just getting it right. Sometimes poses come easily and sometimes they take quite a while. And this one was one of those times where there was a lot of moving around. It took me quite a while to get it to where I, what I really wanted. That's where I say I like to have most of the clay raw through the whole process and, and sort of Obviously sometimes you do have to bake in between because it's just impossible to get a, a complicated sort of seated pose. It's difficult to get that all in one go because it's just impossible to not squash areas that you've already done to try and get to other areas or just not be able to get there at all. So sometimes you do need to. I find with standing poses it's much easier to do a lot of it all in one go. This time I also wanted to try doing the feet afterwards because I always feel like it's very difficult to sculpt a foot in exactly the right angle when you're doing it off the figure because you can't imagine the exact way it would need to be if you know what I mean so I'm just trying it as an experiment trying to do feet at the end this time was pretty successful I'll definitely try and do that again obviously with shoes I'm not sure I'm, I'm working on something with shoes now and I, and I think I'll probably do those separately because so much detail in shoes I, I think that might be quite difficult to do. We'll see. See what happens when I get there. Sometimes you can't really tell, can you, until you've actually done something how you're going to <laughs> tackle it. And then the other thing I did with this one is to make her hands without an armature again. I really think that hands that are pressed against each other or against the skin just look far more natural from my own work, looking at what I've done and sort of objectively feel that often if the hands aren't, if they have an armature, they can, they can sometimes just kind of not sit on the skin, you know, sort of flush with the skin or, or with each other and therefore doesn't look quite natural. It looks almost like it's not relaxed. I tried, I tried doing hands again without an armature. Then I, I still, I still would never try them <laughs> on their own without an armature. That's a bit too far for me. You know, if I've got something to press against, I find it much easier to sculpt a hand without an armature, you know, if it's, if it's against the skin or against another hand. So the other thing I did for this one, the legs separately, the bottom parts of the legs, I didn't sculpt them off the body separately. I did bulk up the clay and then bake it so that I had something quite firm to work on. But when it's standing, it's much easier to do things like legs while it's standing on the, you know, while they're on the figure. But as long as I do find you do need quite a, an amount of bulk of clay first, just so you've got something solid to work on. And of course that helps with, with baking as well. You know, if you're baking, which I'm sure everybody knows already, but obviously if you're baking an underarm material, you've got less clay to bake next time. So it's better for getting a fully cured all the way through figure. But it also really does help with creating quite a solid base to work on. I think that's all that I have to say about this one. I really enjoyed this one actually. I really like these moths. I want to take it a bit further and see what else I can do with them in the future. You know, I'd like to get them looking a bit more dusty in the future. <laughs>
thank you for watching and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting me. I really appreciate every one of you. If you would like to see more videos like this, work in progress, my experiences with working with polymer clay over the years, please subscribe and thank you again for watching this video. See you again soon.